of the press. This week, the return of the soldier. All right, men, keep down. Watch the landmines. Let's go, boys. Stick with me, Sam. Right behind you, boy. Not the fast lads. And let me go ahead and check. Okay, Bill. I'm going with him. No, Sam. Stay with me. He's giving us the okay. Let's go. Come on. No! It's Bill! He hit no! one! Bill! Bill! My leg! My leg! My leg! <laughs> Okay, I'll be right there. Earl Johnson, general manager of the United Press, was waiting when... Come in. Come in. Come in, Joan. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Joan, the United Press feels we've done a great job in telling the story of this war. But there's another story that hasn't been told. The story of the greatest battle our boys will face. Here at home? That's right. The story of the wounded in their first home front battle. The battle of facing their families. Mm, that's a tough one, all right. Yes. Ninety percent of our wounded consider the return home the biggest battle of all. Well, do you want me to... We want you to visit these boys at the Mitchell Field Hospital base and get us a story. Find out what they're up against. Sounds like a real assignment. It is. That story ought to help those boys to win the battle of facing their families. Yes, and maybe show the American people how they can help. Joan Younger? Yes? I'm Nurse Jane Gray. Oh, I'm glad to know you, Miss Gray. Before you go in, there's some things you must know. Yes, I was going to ask you... Don't what... stare at the boys and don't ask them about their wounds. Oh, I understand. It's all right to be sympathetic. But don't be intense about it. If you can't think of what to say, just say, how you're doing, or something like that. Just watch me and you'll be all right. Okay? Okay. Here we go. Boys, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Joan Younger of the United Press. Oh, Joan. <laughs> Hello, yourself. Joan, meet Al Dreiser, the best commando in Normandy. <laughs> he wants to ask you a question. Now, how did you know that? Well, you won't believe me. Maybe you'll believe her. Well, what's on your mind, Al? Well, I'll give it to you straight. Okay. My leg is paralyzed. Will I be able to dance someday? Well, sure you will. I knew it. I knew it, just like the nurse. What do you mean? How can I dance again when I never have danced in my life? I hate dancing. <laughs> <laughs> well, come around and see the girls at United Press. We'll change your mind. Well, maybe I will. You know, I don't want to go home. But why? Oh, Mom will fix breakfast for me in bed. Sis will tiptoe around. And... Well, gee, I won't have any fun at all. I don't want to be pampered. Did you ever meet such a crazy loon in your life, Joan? I think you're making a mistake, Al. I'll tell you what. I'm going to wait till my brother-in-law gets home before I call up tonight. Why tell your brother-in-law first? Well, he can tell sis about me, and then she can tell Ma. It's kind of tough on the folks at home, you know. I don't like to tell Ma because... Boy, she sure can't cry. Think it over, Al. Let me know what you want to do. Okay, nurse. Thanks, Joan, for coming around. Sure, Al. I'll be seeing you again soon. <laughs> Nurse Jane Gray was an angel. The boys' actions were only too familiar to her. There is no way she can prepare any of their families for the bad news. War Department communications state merely that the boy has been wounded in action. It's left to the soldier himself to give the details. Those who can walk on crutches or in casts telephone as soon as they arrive by hospital plane from England. They call their mothers first, but they rarely mention their wounds. They just say... Sure. Sure, I'm fine, Ma. Honest, I am. Don't cry, Ma. Please don't cry. Later, those who are married call their wives and attempt to explain what is wrong with them in a general way. I'm home, honey. It's going to be a tough year ahead, but don't worry. 
I'll be as good as new someday. Someday. Soldiers who are critically wounded usually try to break off their engagements. Nurse Jane Gray always encourages them to think it over for a few days before making up their minds. The blind, the disfigured, the voiceless, and the deaf are handled the most gently. Many of these gallant boys will need long-term expert care before they are capable of facing their family. Well, Joan, you met just about all the boys except one. Who's that? A boy named Bill Williams. Bill Williams? He was out on patrol one night in Normandy. All right, men, keep down. Watch the landmines. Let's go, boys. Stick with me, Sam. Right behind you, boys. That's the fast lads. Right, let me go ahead and check. Okay, Bill. I'm going with him. No, Sam. Stay with me. He's giving us the okay. Let's go. Come on. you see, Bill lost a leg. They brought him in yesterday by plane from England. Poor boy. I've been trying to get him to call his girl. First he says he will, then he changes his mind. Where is he? Over there by the wall. Oh. Don't look now. But would you go over and see what you can do? Well, I don't know that I'll be much use, but I'll try. <laughs> This is Joan Younger of the United Press. Hello. Hello, Bill. Bill, Joan wants to... I know, I know. You want me to call my girl? Don't you think you owe it to her, Bill? After all, you promised the nurse... I've changed my mind. I just can't talk to her. You promised me, Bill. You said you'd call today. What's the use? I... I'm no good to her now. Bill Williams, you're talking through your hat, and you know it. I'm just trying to be fair. Fair? Was that a way to treat a girl who loves you, Bill? A girl who's been waiting for you? Are you going to let her down now? Well, are you? All right. Hand me the phone. Bill Williams took the telephone. His hands were shaking. The men around him gave him the only privacy possible. They ignored him. When the call was put through, Bill turned to me. I won't tell her about my leg. I'll just tell her I don't love her. Give her a chance, Bill. Give her a chance. Tears rolled down Bill's face. When he started to talk, his voice was so weak we had to start over again. Hello. Hello, Amy. Bill. Come home, Amy. They brought me home in a plane. Are you all right, Bill? Tell me the truth. Are you all right? Sure. Sure, I'm fine. Honest, I'm fine. But... Yes, darling. Look, Amy. Yes? I... I lost my leg. Oh, Bill, is that all? Is that all? You silly boob. Why don't you ask a doctor for an artificial leg? Look, Amy, we'll talk about our engagement later when I get to a hospital near home. I love you, Bill. You hear? I love you. More than ever. Amy, you don't know what you're saying, honest. I won't hold you to any promises. Bill, you fool. There'll never be anybody but you. Honey, don't cry. Please don't. I'll be coming home soon. I'll be waiting, Bill. Please remember, I'll be waiting. Goodbye, Amy. Goodbye, darling. Well, what did I tell you, Bill? Was Joan Younger right? Oh, gosh. Amy was wonderful. You know what she said, Joan? What? She said... Why didn't I ask the doctor for an artificial leg? Boy, is she brave. And that's the story of my visit to the hospital base at Mitchell Field, New York. We of the United Press hope that my visit has served its purpose hope that you will make their home front battle as easy as possible. Remember that with your help, the battle is more than won. Before I left the hospital, Bill Williams told me something I think all of you should know. 
He said... I wish every man, woman, and even children could be made to walk through a hospital of wounded and see what it's like. Maybe then there wouldn't be any wars. Ever. <laughs> just heard Joan Younger's dramatic story of the return of the soldier. United Press correspondents cover the world, here at home and all the world battlefronts. We will present another in this series, Soldiers of the Press, soon. Be sure to listen. And meanwhile, remember to listen for United Press news on the air. Look for United Press dispatches in your favorite newspaper. They are your guarantee of the world's best coverage of the world's biggest news.